you know, people have always asked me, how have I maintained a 50 pound weight loss all these years? That's because I work with my biochemistry. In the first half of your cycle, in the follicular and ovulatory phase, your resting metabolism is slower and your resting cortisol levels are lower. And what this means is in order for you to optimize your metabolism as a whole, and when I say optimize your metabolism, I mean used stored fat as fuel efficiently and gain maximum lean muscle from any physical activity. In order to do that as a female in your reproductive years with an active infradian rhythm, you must eat lighter, fewer calories, not extreme, just eat fewer calories, and you must do cardio and high intensity interval training. Now that should sound really easy and familiar to you. Here's the fun, interesting thing. As soon as you're done ovulating and you switch into the second half of your cycle, the luteal and the bleeding phase, your metabolism changes dramatically. Your resting metabolic rate increases and your resting cortisol rate increases. And that means scientifically documented that you need 250 more calories per day must eat them. If you don't eat them, you will be forced to binge eat out of your control. You must proactively eat these extra calories. And then you must not do high intensity interval training or cardio exercises until your bleed is over. Because if you do, if you continue to restrict calories and you don't get that extra caloric value in, and you do all the cardio and HIIT workouts like you were doing for the past two weeks, guess what happens? You turn on fat storage and you turn on muscle wasting. So when I said before, why did these women who were training for a triathlon doing all that cardio for every day for months, how did they gain 20 pounds? That's how. When you don't change what you're eating calorically and you don't change your workouts intensity wise to match what is happening with this infradian biological clock, at best, you will end the month with no change in your weight, but at worst, you will gain weight and lose lean muscle. And this is why, this is the exact scientific reason why you have been feeling like at the end of every month, the scale doesn't budge, or you go up a pound, or you just feel so frustrated and confused to saying to yourself, I, I'm showing up every day, I'm just doing it, you know, pull out any Nike slogan you want, and nothing's happening. This is why, because those just do it every day works if you have testicles. Because if you have testicles, every 24 hours you have the same hormonal pattern, this, and the same diet is required every day, the same timing of your meals and the same timing of your workout is required as a male to optimize your metabolism, your lean muscle gain, and your fat storage utilization. The problem is you've been told as a woman, because we're left out of medical fitness and nutrition research, the assumption is that, gee, well, how much different could it be? Let's just assume that you're a smaller version of a man and that your metabolism is slightly lower than men, so you will need to compensate to restrict calories more and work out more intensely every day than a man does to reap the same benefits from the programs that work so well for men. Turns out that that is so not true and it has been so hurtfully misleading for us to, for, for those bodies of research to just make this blanket assumption and not look at our actual biochemistry. This is why you have been suffering. This is why you're not getting results. This is why you feel confused. Mm. And I'm sorry that it has happened to all of us. It hurt, it, it, I, you know, as I talk through it, I get a little, you know, I'm sure you can feel a little bit of that as you're hearing this, like, oh my God, you know, but it is what it is. The past is the past. Let's move forward in a positive direction. Yeah. So now you've heard the good, the bad news is that that has happened. The good news is we now have a vocabulary term to introduce into our culture. It is the infradian rhythm. If you're in your reproductive years, it is active and you must take care of it. it. This is not a nice idea. In fact, this is so significant 
the U.S. women's soccer team is training their female athletes based on their infradian rhythm to optimize their physical performance. So they are some pretty phenomenal peak athletes in pretty extraordinary shape. So if, if you're someone, listen, and I'm not a, I, I, my focus is never about weight. My focus is about hormone. If you go to that root foundational level of supporting your biological rhythm as a woman with your infradian rhythm, and you take care of your endocrine system, everything else balances itself out. I did not do anything to lose weight except to, be, to take care of my hormonal function, yeah. right? You can't, you can't force weight loss. You have to go to the root cause. You cannot spot treat excess weight. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, because I, I think because, because weight gain and difficulty losing weight is such a, a major, a big symptom for PCOS, um, I feel a lot of women they kind of focus on that symptom. They kind of obsess over it. And obviously yes. we go to the doctor as well. I did too at the beginning. One of the, one of the things that they say to you is, okay, lose cut weight. carbs, cut carbs and lose weight. It's like, thanks for the advice. And then you go on a diet. A lot of people don't know, you know, how to, how to lose weight properly. They just go on the internet and they're like, how do I lose weight? You put up like an 800 calorie diet or 1,200 calorie diet and you follow that meal plan and then you search for how can I lose weight fast? It's always fast. How can I lose it fast? It's never how can I lose it sustainably? And then you find out HIIT training is like the best for fat loss and then you do that. And then like in a couple of months, you just feel like absolute, you feel worse than you did. That's right. And not just that you feel worse, you're actually um, hormonally worse off because what you have done by disrupting this cycle is you've dis destabilized your blood sugar, which is terrible for PCOS. You've increased cortisol production, which is going to stop ovulation, which is something you need to regain if you have a PCOS as a, as a diagnosis. And you could and because of that increased cortisol and destabilized blood sugar, you're now going to be making less progesterone, which you desperately need to have a cycle. So you could have even longer space between one period to the next. 